Hi, if you are wondering why you keep failing to pursue a healthy diet or other life goals, the ego trap, a concept developed by the psychologist Dr. Doug Lyle, explains why this is happening. In this video, I'll explain what the ego trap is and what you can do to get out of it and achieve your goals. When we are planning something challenging in life, our ego gets in the way. Every version of the ego trap is a situation where the expectations others have towards us are higher than what we have for ourselves. This trap has nothing to do with our conscientiousness and intelligence in general. A classic example is the dynamic between well-intentioned parents and their kids when parents shower them with praise that they will be the next geniuses. And on top of that, the parents told all their friends how clever their offspring is. The child knows very well that is not the next Einstein and that its own ability is much lower. The consequence, the child learns only half-heartedly for an upcoming exam because it feels that it cannot meet the expectations. This is a classic case of the ego trap. The expectation towards the child are unrealistically high and it knows that. My friend is a teacher and if you measured the children's abilities compared to their parents' praises, she would have a full class of Einsteins, which is obviously not the case. Another classic example of the ego trap is when you communicate to your friends and family that you are making a dietary change to lose weight. Now everyone expects that you will make it. Because hey, it can't be that hard to lose weight, right? Look at me, I'm so slim, I must do something right. The thin people think they are thin because of their willpower. But they are not thin because of that. They are thin because of natural genetic variation. They have much more sensitive stretch and nutrient receptors in their stomach and differences in their metabolism. The majority of people, no matter how slim they are, do not know that we are all sitting in the pleasure trap. The slim people didn't earn their thinness, they just got it from nature. Now that your friends and family know about your new project, you are standing in an arena where everybody is watching you and seeing every failure of yours. You have told everyone that you will lose weight and in this situation can be accompanied by a possible love or status. These people either have a high opinion of you and think it is easy to achieve, but your own expectations are much more realistic and below. Since humans have lived in small groups between 20 and 200 people for millions of years, it is extremely important to us how our environment thinks about us. If you do not give your best, you cannot be criticized. The right move for your mind is to not try and signal everyone around you very obviously that you're not trying. This has the effect that now the others who are observing you will say the reason you are failing is that you never tried and you could do it if you tried. But because you're not trying, that's why you're failing. The right thing to do is to self-sabotage. In this way you maintain the esteem you already have. Even though you continue to fail, this is the dynamic behind the ego trap. It's a deep instinct designed for any social situation. Parents and friends mean well when they praise you high up to the sky, but unfortunately it is often the wrong tactic to motivate us to start something challenging or difficult. The result, you start several times and then stop again, because you never live up to the expectations. We end up with procrastination and say, I start tomorrow or I have emotional problems. Someone gave you the signal to do it, but you only managed 70% of it because this is the limit of your personal abilities. Your intuition tells you that you will only make it under the expectations of others. 
this puts you in a motivation trap because your possibility is below the expectation. You lose status and that hurts. That is why many do not lose the weight or try to eat healthy food although they know what a healthy diet should look like. Projects in life are doomed to failure if we set the goal too high such as I'm never eating junk food again. Now we know how motivation works when losing weight or for example, it works through a cost-benefit analysis in our minds. This is by nature designed not to try something challenging at first, because as we now know, if you do not try something, you have nothing to lose. If we strive for something higher, it is because we want to gain status from others. This is a subconscious process. The ego trap does not only apply to losing weight, but to all areas of life. In the end, the ego is the word we use when we achieve status feedback from others. Ego is just another word for it. For example, when we say, that was good for my ego or that was not good for my ego. The conventional and common recommendations are unrealistic when it comes to losing weight. There is still something important to consider here. Alcohol, cigarettes and our modern food are so stimulating that it is very difficult to get away from them. You are not only in the ego trap but also in the pleasure trap. Losing weight is a difficult task in itself and with the additional pleasure trap you can top it off. The pleasure trap is an unnatural problem and shows no respect for how beautiful or intelligent you are. It's a hidden force of interactions between our modern environment and our Stone Age circuits that are designed for an environment of scarcity. As a result, the intelligent human being is in the ego trap. If you believe you can gain more status or appreciation from others by trying to start something, and even if you don't succeed, you don't feel you have much to lose, guess what? This is one of the best things that can happen to you in terms of motivation. Because exactly in this situation, you are very excited about the prospect. So the best approach in this situation is not to tell your environment that you want to lose weight or eating healthy. If they ask you, for example, because they notice your new diet, then you might say that you are trying something new and see how it works out. In this way, you don't set the bar high and your environment has no expectations towards you because you signal from the beginning that you might not be able to do it. For your motivation, however, this is a boost because what do you have to lose? Another factor that plays a role here in the dynamic of the ego trap is the internal audience. The internal audience is that voice within us. It's for example a drive for the motivation to lose weight. Each of us has a kind of internal audience. You know the inner voice when you have to study for example for an exam and instead of the four, hour, four hours you only study two. This inner voice switches on and you know for sure that you have done a lousy performance or that great feeling when you studied for four hours instead and the inner voice tells you, well done. This internal audience is a fair mechanism. It reflects exactly what you are doing. If you have done a great job on whatever, you get positive feedback from your internal audience. And if you have done a bad job, you get negative feedback. These trophies from your internal audience are not for free. It's often faked in many motivation coaching sessions and seminars. You can't fool your internal audience. This mechanism is dynamic and not taken into account in most of today's psychology. Even if you haven't lost 20 pounds after a week, but have achieved 80% of your goals, your internal audience will give you positive feedback. That feels great and that's the key to what motivates you to keep going. 
So instead of relying on feedback from others and being motivated by it, be more sensitive to the feedback from your internal audience. Shift the focus from how much appreciation you get from the outside for your goal to how much appreciation you get from your internal audience. Besides, only a few people know that you can lose about 30 to 50 grams of fat per day. So losing weight is a marathon, not a sprint. Remember that. How should your diet and weight loss goal look like? It will be different for everyone because everyone has a different starting point. However, it is important not to set the goal too low, otherwise you will not achieve your maximum weight success. Make your internal audience proud by setting realistic goals. Set the bar somewhere between too easy and too difficult. Only you know where that point is and you have to experiment. Don't seek perfection in healthy eating. Remember, with an A- or even B plus diet, you will still eat a way healthier diet than almost everyone out there in the Western world. Dr. Lyle sums it up nicely with a quote from John Wooden. Focus on the process and not on the result. We don't care about winning because success comes from knowing that you have done the best you can. Now you know what's going on. It is simple but not easy. Let me know what questions you have or if you need help with this.